Yo ho ho, a pirate's life for me. Let me stop you right there. If you think being a pirate or a sailor back in the old days was so cool, here's the harsh truth. It was not all about singing sea shanties and embarking on epic voyages across the seven seas to find the fountain of youth or caves filled with gold. It wasn't actually that cool being at sea all the time, and I have five compelling reasons to prove you so. Let's dive in, pun intended. Now imagine this. You're so excited. You've been waiting for this day to come, and finally, it's official. You're going to become a real sailor. The captain tells you to get ready because the next day, you're going to set sail on a journey that is expected to take somewhere around six months, if you're lucky, that is, because storms and singing mermaids could complicate things. You pack a few things. Now, let's pause this daydream for a quick second because here comes problem number one. What I mean by packing a few things is just the clothes on your back. Sailors would only have one set of clothes that they almost never washed during the entire voyage. That's because they believed that dirt and grease would protect them from winds and rains. Okay, back to the thought experiment. You kiss your family goodbye and head to the port where your new home is waiting. One of your crew members not so warmly welcomes you on the deck and shows you where you'll be sleeping. This makes you start doubting your choice of becoming a sailor in the first place. Because after seeing it, you're certain that this is not going to be a five-star hotel comfort level kind of experience. So, here's problem number two. The ships were absolutely crammed. Back in the day, sailors would have to accept living in such conditions, whether they were working for a big name like Christopher Columbus or not. The Nina and the Pinta were two of Columbus's ships and the best sailing vessels of their time. Yet again, this didn't change the fact that they were so small that men had no place to sleep. Which gives us problem number three. Having to sleep next to one another on a crowded deck where they could barely move was not so great for sailors' health conditions, and going below deck to escape the snoring of their fellow shipmates was not an option because there was no fresh air there. In addition, you could always come across a rat there. So, kiss personal hygiene goodbye. And in case you're wondering how rats got there, those little rascals are actually good swimmers. Also, sailors were at sea no matter the season or the weather, so they were often cold and wet, which also made it hard for them to stay healthy and strong. Speaking of health conditions brings us to problem number four, and it's food and hunger. Sailors didn't have their own mini fridges with different kinds of condiments back then, like the compartments luxury cruises have these days. So they had to come up with ways to store enough food that would last for months or even years. Due to that, their food options were limited. It definitely wasn't like the food prepared by Michelin star chefs. One of the most common food options on ships was salted meat, which wasn't as chewy as you might imagine. Or a biscuit called hardtack, also called sheet iron or worm castles. And there's a reason for all these creative nicknames. Hardtack was essentially a mix of water and flour baked into a cardboard flavored cracker. They were brick-like and the only way they could be eaten was if they were softened with water. If only sailors could dip them in their afternoon tea, right? Sometimes these biscuits would still be extremely dense. Then sailors would have to slam their fists down on them to break them into smaller pieces to be able to eat the stuff. As long as hardtack was kept dry, it rarely got spoiled. The sailors would be able to eat them after a year if they had any left. But most of the time, it would be extremely hard to keep them dry inside wooden casks. And then, they would get infested with bugs that would leave small holes behind. However, sailors would still eat them anyway. Have to take protein from somewhere. By now, you might have figured out that there were no fruits or vegetables in a sailor's diet. This caused vitamin deficiency in many sailors. So those toothless pirates and sailors in the movies you see? Yep, it's all because of poor nutrition. And the iron hard crackers probably didn't help either. But when sailors ran out of food, not having a balanced diet was probably the least of their concerns. Back in the old times, a voyage could take way longer than expected due to weather conditions. There could be no winds to push the ship further. 
Or a powerful storm could shake the ship and the waves and water could destroy the food storage. So when such a situation happened, sailors could easily run out of food. Well, they could throw the net into the ocean and catch some fish, right? But sailors didn't eat fish even in the face of starvation. Many captains mentioned this in their logbooks, which were basically captain's diaries. The problem was not that sailors couldn't get fish. In fact, many different kinds of fish were caught in their nets, but they had to throw them all back into the sea. During the exploration era, Antonio Pigafetta mentioned in his logbook that the ship's crew caught an unbelievable amount of fish, but they didn't eat any of them. Also, in the same journal, he mentioned that 40 of the sailors lost their lives. Naturally, sailors thought that only poisonous fish were dangerous. And because of that, they were inclined to eat only the fish they knew. But even a well-cooked tuna could be poisonous, and they had to learn it the hard way. But it's not like they didn't have any methods to check fish. Spanish sailors, for example, put silver coins on them. If the silver changed color, they considered those fish to be poisonous, therefore inedible. So they would toss them overboard. Other sailors would place the fish they caught on the deck and observe if flies or other insects came to feast on it. If they didn't land on the fish, this meant that it was poisonous. But if insects did come, they considered it safe to eat. The problem of eating fish caught in the open sea dates back to as early as the 7th century BCE. Imperial healers in ancient China knew that eating fish was the reason why some sailors lost their lives. But they couldn't prove that the fish were poisonous, and the mystery remained unsolved up until the 19th century. In 1886, a Cuban doctor finally figured out that some fish contained poison in their tissues and muscles, even though they were considered a safe-to-eat breed. That kind of poison is actually something that is found in plankton. Some fish can eat this plankton without being affected. They store it in their bodies. And as they grow, the rate of the poison increases within them. And this is something that doesn't go away no matter how long one cooks the fish. If you still think that life at sea back in the old days sounds exciting, this fifth problem will convince you otherwise. Let's say you've managed to get along with your roommates, stay clean and healthy, and eat regularly. But there's always a risk of getting caught by pirates, and they didn't ask for things kindly. So if you didn't want to end up as food for sharks, you would have to raise the white flag and simply join them. Not the career you are planning, right? Good luck scrubbing the deck for the rest of your life. Take a look at some regular aluminum foil. One side of it is always shiny and the other one is dull. When making the foil, they flatten it with rollers. The foil is so thin that the rollers tear it. To avoid it, the foil is folded and two layers are rolled at a time. So, the sides that were facing the roller are shiny and those that were in the middle, one facing the other, are dull. Those little rubber hairs on car or bike tires that seem to have hidden meaning don't really have any purpose. They appear during the tire production process. So, they mix rubber with carbon black and put it onto a tire mold. Then, it's spread all over under high air pressure. To make a good tire, the rubber should cover the surface completely without skipping anything. But there's a problem. Air bubbles can form between the mold and the rubber. To make sure it doesn't happen and extra air escapes, the tire mold has little holes all over it. Some rubber penetrates there, and once the tire is ready, the rubber that goes into those holes turns into little hairs. No one cares enough to remove them because that would take more time and effort, and those hairs do no harm. Car windows have those tiny dissolving black dots, and they are not there just for a fancy design. They're called frits, and they make the surface of a glass rougher, so that the adhesive can stick better and glue the glass to the car frame. Also, the black enamel blocks the UV light of the sun that can melt the adhesive underneath the bands around the window. The problem is that the black band heats up faster than the transparent glass, so the tiny dissolving dots help to distribute the temperature evenly. When you spend some time in the water swimming or bathing, your fingers and toes get all wrinkly. The skin has three layers. First, the subcutaneous tissue. Then, the dermis. That has the blood vessels and nerves. Finally, 
The top layer is the epidermis. It protects other layers and makes sure that the water doesn't evaporate from the body. The epidermis is made up of four layers, and the very top one of them, the stratum corneum, is what you see when you look at your skin. It has dead keratin cells that are constantly shed. This layer protects your body from the environment. If you expose the fingers or toes to water for a long time, those dead cells absorb water, and the skin swells. Since it's attached to the tissue, the wrinkles appear to compensate for the increased surface of the outer layer. It doesn't happen to the rest of your body because toes and fingers have the thickest layers of those keratin cells as body parts that are the most exposed to damage. Try speaking in your normal voice when you're crying, and you will likely fail. Your voice considerably changes, and even people who can't see you can tell that something is wrong. The catch is that tears cause changes in the vocal tract, creating many vocal problems for us that are almost impossible to overcome, even if you try. You get tension in your jaw, the larynx raises, and you get a higher-pitched voice. Your vocal cords swell, and they can't work properly for the moment. Sinuses swell too, and you get the nasal sound. Seashells sound like the ocean. Sorry to ruin it for you, but that's not true. The shape of the shell amplifies all the noise around you, and you hear them more distinctively since they're concentrated in one place. The air that gets into the shell bounces from its inner surfaces and resonates inside. The sound effect depends on the shape and size of the shell. If the shell is big, the air bounces for a longer time, and the pitch is lower than if you use a smaller shell. Green screens are commonly used in movie making and video making for visual effects. The simple answer behind why they're made green is fun and simple. Because people aren't green. The movie maker needs a color that isn't used anywhere in the shot so that everything green is hidden. Colors like orange, yellow, or red and their shades wouldn't work because they're similar to people's skin tone. Green and blue are the colors that people's skin tone or hair color don't contain naturally, so they mostly choose those for the screen. Green is more common because it's easier to work with. It's more luminous, so it needs less lighting than a blue screen. When using a green screen, people in the shot can't wear green if they have to be visible. If one wears something green, that part will just get transparent. People that need to be invisible for some effects wear green, and the post-production crew can add chosen footage above their images. Most classroom blackboards, despite the name, are green. Back in the day, 18th century students were using little individual boards in class to write on, instead of copy books we have now. The boards were made of slate or wood, and they were actually black. Later, teachers started to use boards too, but of bigger size, and they were called blackboards. The material wasn't convenient, so in the 1960s, the company started to produce the boards differently. They used steel plates covered with green enamel. They were lighter and less fragile, and they worked perfectly. These are the boards we typically use nowadays. So, the color changed because of advances in design, and the name is still the same. But some people now call it a chalkboard. 13 is often called a baker's dozen, and there's a fun history behind it. Back in the day in medieval England, bakers came up with the idea to solve one problem. Loaves of bread used to turn out to be of different sizes because of the difference in dough rise and lack of equipment to scale properly. A customer buying a dozen of something could be very unsatisfied if some of the loaves they got were visibly smaller than the others. To compensate for that, bakers would typically add an additional 13th loaf so that no one complained. AM and PM, we use speaking of time, are Latin letters. AM stands for ante meridium, which means before noon. PM stands for post meridium, meaning afternoon. Latin letters are still used in many other abbreviations. Pounds are marked as LB, from Latin Libra Pondo. You may occasionally find your cats chilling in a sink. They love it because the bathtub and the sink are usually the coolest places in the house. So, if it's hot inside, many cats, especially long-haired ones, prefer to escape to a more comfortable environment. The bathroom is also usually the quietest place where people don't walk around all the time, and cats feel less disturbed there. A sink can serve as an observation deck for them. It's elevated, and a cat can observe and control what's going on in their territory from up there. Typically, engagements and wedding rings are worn on the fourth finger. The tradition comes from ancient Egypt, Rome, and Greece. 
people were wearing them on that finger because they believed that there was a vein in it leading straight to the heart. Wearing a ring on it symbolized that the heart of a person was taken. Originally, they put the ring on the right hand because some people believed that the left hand was unhappy. Some countries changed it to the left hand later. Now we know that there's no vein leading to the heart. But the tradition lives on. It's always that finger. Another explanation is even more symbolic. Put your hands together so that the same fingers of each hand touch one another. Fold your middle fingers inwards. The thumbs symbolize your parents. You can separate the thumbs because you leave your parents. Index fingers symbolize your siblings. You can separate them because you have different lives. Pinkies symbolize you and your partner's kids. You can separate pinkies too because children will leave. Ring fingers symbolize you and your partner. Try separating them. You can't because partners share life together. In most countries, wedding dresses are typically white. But this tradition isn't as old as you might think. Until the 19th century, wedding dresses were of any random color. Basically, a bride just wore her best gown. As a rule, they weren't white because at the times of no running water, white wasn't a practical color. It was also associated with mourning. Royal women were typically married in red gowns until 1840 when Queen Victoria got married in a white gown. At first, the aristocrats frowned upon it, but less than a decade later, white became widely accepted since it was associated with purity and innocence. In a supermarket, you pass by a shelf with eggs and try to decide which ones are better, the white ones or the brown ones. There's practically no difference between them. The egg's color depends on the breed of the chicken. These birds produce two different color pigments. You can take eggs of any color because the nutritional components of the eggs are almost the same. So, what came first, the brown egg or the white egg? Eh, never mind. It's enough to use a small amount of toothpaste to brush your teeth the size of a pea. But the ads show that you have to cover the entire toothbrush with paste as a marketing ploy. Manufacturers want you to buy a new tube faster. A plane leaves white lines behind in the blue sky thanks to the condensation of carbon dioxide, steam, and burning fuel. In winter, heated air visibly comes out of your mouth. The same principle works here. It's always icy at the altitude where planes are flying. Exhaust and hot air comes out of the turbines. When it collides with cold air, it creates thick lines of steam. Almost all hotels have white bedsheets. They choose this color specifically to show how high their standards of cleanliness are. The whiter and brighter the sheets are, the more luxurious the hotel seems. It's much easier to see dirt and stains on white linen. It's like proof that you've checked into a cleaned room. Gasoline looks like a rainbow in a puddle because it can't mix with water. It forms a thin membrane over it. When light reflects from it and the water at the same time, you've got a rainbow. The Do Not Disturb sign on your hotel room door is not a requirement, but just a suggestion. Maids and staff have the right to go there if they suspect something's wrong, especially if you don't remove the sign for 24 hours. Why do clocks go to the right? The sun is the main reason. In ancient times, when people invented the sundial, the sun's shadow was moving to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Mechanical clocks were first invented in the Northern Hemisphere, so it always goes right. Or, as we now say, clockwise. Why are the cups at parties colored red? Because it helps you quickly find your drink on the table among snacks and drinks, and all those other red cups. Here's a hint. Write your name, Michael, on the cup, if your name is Michael. Also, red is considered a color that provokes action. At the psychological level, it seems the red cup is commanding you, Hey, drink me up! They believe yellow taxis have their roots in 15th century Italy. One postal businessman used yellow cabins for delivering mail. He wanted everyone to recognize his carts. About 60 to 80 percent of people, mostly aged 15 to 25, occasionally have goosebump induced deja vu moments. It's fleeting and unpredictable. And scientists are still not 100% sure why it happens and can't control it. To understand it better, they tried to create memories for patients under hypnosis. Then they asked them to forget or remember the memory, and it made them experience deja vu later. 
Other scientists tried to recreate it in virtual reality with scenes and games that looked alike. The experiments made them believe deja vu is your memory playing tricks on you. You get into a situation that's similar to a real memory that you have, but you can't remember it completely. Your brain notices the similarities and leaves you with a strange feeling of already seen. That's how deja vu translates from French. Another version is that it's a memory glitch. It's more likely to happen when you're stressed. So when you're under pressure or have a lot of information to process at once, some of it can end up in long-term memory instead of short-term memory. So you take your best friend Max to the doggy park. He meets the labradoodle of his dreams, and they start playing together. Peaceful tail wagging quickly grows into biting each other. Oh no, they're going for the next! You grab Max and rush back home. Well, in fact, there was no need to rush home. Playing with open mouths is called mouth wrestling or jaw sparring. It's a healthy way of interaction between dogs. They inherited this habit from their wolf ancestors. When a dog is a puppy, it has to learn some important skills, including fighting. Mouthing is just an imitation of it. When a puppy matures, it will know how to protect itself and respect boundaries of other doggos. All the chasing, wrestling, growling, and face biting is a way to socialize with others and have fun in the dog world. It's something like sibling rivalry and playful fights in the human world. Cute kittens and cats under the age of two also practice mouthing. They often tumble over each other and bite one another's necks to let their hunter instincts out. In the wild, cats are fast and merciless, and they can't hide it behind all the purrs in the world. Play biting with other kitties can also teach your little Mr. Biscuit to be more gentle when it plays with you and other humans, so it's all good. Cats like to sharpen their claws on your furniture to leave a visual mark on their territory. They also do it to let their claws renew and stretch their back and shoulders. The couch seems perfect for it, because it's not too short and is sturdy enough. Well, you gotta find a good replacement with the same qualities to let your kitty scratch and release its emotions. Cats freak out when they see a cucumber because it looks too much like their longtime enemy, snakes. They're naturally programmed to jump up in the air to protect themselves from a bite. Anything that looks similar, from toys to eggplants, causes a similar reaction. It's never a good idea to show them things like that for fun. It can really mess up their mental health. Fish have gills and fins, but they don't have necks. Instead, they have a series of bones that connect their skull and shoulder girdle. One of the reasons for that is it would be really hard to be fast while swimming if they had a neck waggling back and forth. Plus, the moment a creature similar to a fish developed a neck, science automatically classified it as another group of animals. That means the official definition says if a creature has a neck, we can't call it a fish. The oldest neck scientists have on record belongs to one unusual creature that lived 375 million years ago. It was part fish and part tetrapod, which is a term for an animal with four limbs. Now, rain won't always make the ground wet. There are very hot and dry areas where rain can evaporate even before it gets to the ground. It's something called phantom rain. You can see dense curtains of drops coming from above, but at the same time, nothing's on the ground, and none of the water reaches the living beings. Rats laugh when you tickle them. They mostly giggle when being tickled, and during one experiment where researchers tickled them, they even chased after their hands in a playful manner. All of the great apes, which is a group that includes gorillas, orangutans, bonobos, and chimpanzees, are ticklish too, and generally respond to tickling with a pretty distinctive human-like laugh. Penguins, dogs, meerkats, and many others also seem to pretty much like it. Different nations have different systems when it comes to vehicle registration, including license plate color. Australia goes with an unlimited palette when it comes to plates. They include many different motifs and designs. In the UK, cars have two possible number plate colors, yellow at the back of a vehicle and white at the front. Both have black characters. Now, it wasn't always like this. Number plates in this country used to have either white or silver characters. But starting from 1979, all vehicles must have the exact plates we see today for a reason. Every registration plate must be made from reflective material. So if the number plate at the back of your car is white, it might reflect white light, which is not legal. 
Elephants have enormous ears, and normally they can hold them out to scan noise back and forth. But there are sometimes distant vocalizations and noise they can hear with their feet. When they detect something that's far away, elephants freeze and lean forward. They transfer weight to their front legs and may even lift up a front foot. Hmm, hearing with your toes. That's quite a feat. (laughs) Behind those huge steel doors is one of the most guarded places on Earth. It's known as Site R, or the Raven Rock Mountain Complex. You'll find it in Pennsylvania. The construction is 60 stories underground and is said to be a safe place for people in case of a natural or human-made disaster. There's not a lot of information online about this mysterious place, but what we do know is that it's equipped with 38 communication systems. It's obviously not available for visits via Google Earth, but you can catch a quick glance at the two gates that face the complex. Vatican City is one of the most famous enclaves on Earth, and it's certainly worth a visit due to its wonderful architecture and vast list of art pieces to check out. One place, however, will always be off limits for visitors, the Vatican's secret archives. They have some of the oldest and rarest books on Earth. These archives are available only to a limited number of people, and since they have been visited by a small number of people so far, they also trigger a lot of weird theories. For example, that there may be books proving there's life outside our planet. If you're fascinated by shipwrecks, you'll be interested to know that one of the largest wrecks you can see on Google Earth is on North Sentinel Island, India. It used to be called the SS Jassim. It was a Bolivian ferry that sank in the area back in 2003. The reason why people can't visit it physically isn't because of the ship itself, but because the island is home to the world's most dangerous tribe. We don't really know how many people live there, but it was estimated that between 50 to 400 people call this place home, and they really don't like tourists. No person that tried to reach them survived. Also, to protect them, their privacy, and their special status, the island is closely monitored by the Indian authorities. That's mostly because it's believed the locals don't have any immunity to modern diseases. So being in contact with foreigners might be dangerous for the tribe's people, since they've never seen the outer world. A huge pink bunny appeared seemingly out of nowhere in the Italian Coletto Fava Mountains back in 2005. Besides the locals, some people stumbled upon it online too. They were puzzled by the discovery. Unfortunately, that 200-foot tall bunny is completely gone today. You can still find the images of it online though. The unusual object was designed by artists from Vienna. They encouraged tourists to climb, jump, or even take a nap on top of the large rabbit. The whole purpose of the project was to allow people to experience what it would be like to live as smaller creatures. The bunny didn't have any removal date at the time it was placed there and was expected to last at least until 2025. But Mother Nature had other plans. A Japanese artist decided to move back to her little home village named Nagoro. But she soon found out that most of her neighbors were moving to bigger cities. To deal with loneliness, she started putting together scarecrow-like dolls, or kakashi, and placing them all over her garden. She didn't stop there, though. The artist soon began doing the same with many other places in her village, creating dolls and placing them as if they were taking part in various human activities. These dolls keep moving around, too, but the woman likes to stay true to her story and insists she doesn't touch them. You can see the images of this quirky village on Google Maps. This weird portal was discovered via online maps in New Baltimore, New York. It gave people all sorts of bad dreams. With spooky-looking buildings and all sorts of blurry figures, this area soon became a source for many weird internet theories. Turns out it was nothing more than a technical issue, which resulted in those images being rendered in a distorted manner. Either way, if you look for these images on Google, you won't be able to unsee them. This cute miniature world map was created by an artist from Denmark. He continuously worked on this tedious project from 1944 until 1967, using mostly his hands and just a few tools for moving heavy rocks around. He gathered stones at the edge of the water, then recreated the map of the world on the surface of this lake. During the winter, he was able to use a sled to transport larger pieces of rock over the ice and then place them in the perfect position. Apart from the continents themselves, the map also features rivers and lakes, as well as some other famous landmarks. Care to have a look at a sea without any coasts? Search for the Sargasso Sea. You'll find it in the northern Atlantic Ocean. 
This weird sea is surrounded by four ocean currents and no dry land at all. It got its name from the seaweed that grows there, sargassum. Fingerprints on the lens of a satellite camera? You may be tricked into thinking this if you search for the finger maze. It's located in the city of Brighton, UK, and is a large fingerprint created in Hove Park. It also has a maze at the center. It can be really hard and time-consuming to look for wild animals on Google Earth, but the Geo Browser does have a nice feature that can help if you're eager to see hippos and flamingos in their natural habitat. Try Googling animals from above and start scrolling through these images. This unique feature can take you from Kenya to Namibia and even all the way to Antarctica, where you can see emperor penguins. There are some places on Google Maps that, for specific reasons, aren't available for the online public, like the Royal Palace in Amsterdam. If you head over there via Google Earth, you'll see that everything around the Dutch Royal Palace is still visible, like the vegetation and roads, but the construction itself is blurred from all angles. That's probably because local authorities want to keep the unique views of the palace for the eyes of physical visitors only. The same goes for the Tantaco National Park in Chile. This one is a privately owned nature reserve that can only be seen on Google Maps from a distance. Once you reach a certain point, the zoom feature stops working. Some people say that since it's a nature preserve, it may be home to some endangered species, and extreme measures are taken for their protection. You know how a certain brand of fried chicken has a certain kernel on their logo? Yeah, you won't see any of these logos in high resolution on Google Maps. That's because the online map uses specific algorithms to detect people's faces and blur them out. As you can see, it's not always really that accurate. It's called Snake Island, and the Brazilian authorities prohibit people from visiting it. For good reason. You'll find the island near the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil. It's said to be home to over 4,000 snakes. Some of the most venomous types of reptiles on Earth call this place home. If that's not creepy enough, how about that some of them are so dangerous that a small drop of their venom can permanently damage the human skin? You can see the shape of the island on Google Earth, but the more you zoom in, the blurrier it becomes. Here's another cool thing you can do on Google Earth. Time travel. Well, at least sort of. You won't be able to travel back in time and tell yourself to study more for that tricky exam, but you can see certain historical images of places you like. You can check if this feature works by looking at the upper left corner of the screen. If you can see a small icon with a clock, it may allow you to scroll some years back but you can also see how sunlight affects Earth if you turn on the sunlight feature. There are two sides to every story. Just like to a regular cotton pad, two different textures to be more precise. One is smooth, and you're supposed to use it for more sensitive areas of your face, for example, the eyes. The rougher side can help you remove makeup and clean your face in less sensitive areas, like the forehead. If you like having greenery in your home, you've probably noticed the flower pots have holes at the bottom. These holes are the reason your green friends live a happy life. They're extremely important for water drainage. Thanks to these holes, you'll avoid stagnant water buildup that can eventually ruin your plant. Also, thanks to those holes, roots can grow and expand beyond the limits of your pot. Have you noticed aviator sunglasses mostly have green lenses? It has something to do with their origin. First, they showed up in the 1930s. Before that, pilots had goggles to protect their eyes while they were in the air. High altitudes with glaring sun and sub-zero temperatures were a real test for their eyes. The goggles helped them with those issues, but there was another one. Since the temperature differences between the air, outside, and within the goggles were big, the lenses would fog up and obscure the pilot's view. So, the company Bausch & Lohm came up with teardrop lenses surrounded by a light metal frame. These lenses were dark green because this tint cuts out blue light, which is also a problem for pilots when they're flying above the cloud line. Plus, green lenses also reduce glare and improve contrast and sharpness. Holes in the side of your Converse sneakers? Hmm, are those really necessary? Well, they allow air to enter your shoe so your feet can stay cool. You can also use them to style up your shoes and tie them in different ways too. There are two reasons plastic bottles have grooves. 
First, if you're drinking cold water and it's hot outside, you'll see there's a lot of condensation on your bottle. Or maybe if you're playing some sport or working out. Your hands are sweaty and if a bottle had a smooth surface, it would be more difficult to grip it. So the ridges are there to improve your hand grip. The second reason is that because of these ridges, manufacturers can use thinner plastic. That means they need less material in overall production. And that plastic is still firm enough for the bottle to maintain its shape. Wooden coat hangers are not just there to look nice. Since they're made of cedar wood, they bring a nice scent to your closet. Plus, they repel bugs. They're also quite firm, so they come in handy for heavy clothes, such as jackets. And it's hard to damage them. So, they'll serve you longer. You may have noticed there's a colored square at the bottom of your toothpaste. These blocks mostly come in blue, red, green, and black. They are some sort of eye marks, since they help manufacturing machines at the assembly line recognize where and when to cut the toothpaste and seal the end of the tube. Some boots have loops at their top and back. Looks like a fashion statement, doesn't it? Or maybe it's something that manufacturers add for fun. But those loops actually have their purpose. With them, you can pull the shoe up when trying to wear it. Plus, you can easily hang them or use the loop for better support for the laces. Confession time! Remember those attachments your vacuum cleaner came with? Did you also put them somewhere aside and never use them again? They're actually pretty helpful when you're cleaning the house because you can use them for particular areas that are sometimes hard to reach with the regular attachment. We all know what the vegetable peeler is for, but besides peeling the skin of carrots or potatoes, you can use it for onions too. It may be faster than doing it with a knife, plus it will save you some onion tears. Some sweatshirts have something pretty specific in the neck area. A V-shaped stitch you can see in the middle of the collar. The ribbed insert, similar to the ribbing at the hem and the sleeves, would allow the owner to put the garment on more easily and it wouldn't even lose shape. The V insert would stretch so a person wearing the sweatshirt could get their head through the neck. Its purpose was also to absorb sweat. In its early versions, sweatshirts had both the back and the front of the collars. Through time, they lost the back one, and this V insert became something decorative since manufacturers started to stitch a V at the collar without using the ribbed material they had added before. Brightly colored squares or circles you see on food packages aren't an indication of vitamins, minerals, or certain flavors that food contains. And nope, it's not some secret code consumers are supposed to crack. It's actually for printing engineers. They're called process control patches or printer's color blocks. During the process of printing the food packaging, manufacturers use those colored blocks to check if the printing ink is correct. They compare the color of blocks they print to make sure the brand they print for has a consistent and recognizable quality all over the world. The majority of printers only use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Some printers have additional colors, such as green, orange, and violet. That's why you sometimes see multiple circles on certain packages. They test each ink color. Margins in notebooks. They're not there as some sort of a guide for taking notes and writing. Someone came up with a potential solution that was supposed to protect the written work from, well, rats. They used to be pretty common residents in people's homes. They are known for their diet, including basically anything, like paper, for example. So, people started adding wide margins as an appetizer that was supposed to keep rats full. This way, they wouldn't want to get to the main dish, the written pages. Suits have a buttonhole close to the top of the lapel. Manufacturers sew it shut so you can't open it without ruining your suit. And when you compare it to the other lapel, you see that one is completely smooth, without any clues. You won't find such an unpartnered buttonhole on a suit jacket only. Camp shirts, pea coats, and some other clothing pieces have them too. And they have to do with the history of lapels. The earliest ones showed up at the beginning of the 19th century. Before this, men mostly wear frocks with high collars. They would button them all the way up to the top. During hot days, they would relax the button stance, turn down the collars, and leave the top button undone. It was a relief from the swelter, 
Plus, their folded over laps would be symmetrical at the chest, and today, we recognize that as a lapel. People stopped using that buttonhole after they came up with a lapel, unless it was for some formal occasion. Like, for example, when you wanted to put a flower in there. That's why suit makers left it as a fashion feature. Tea bags. It's pretty easy to guess what they're for, but they come in handy if you have smelly feet after a long day in your shoes. Just pop tea bags, unused of course, in your shoes during the night. By the time you wake up, tea bags are going to effectively absorb all the unwanted odors. Binder clips can also have a helpful purpose besides their main one. You can clip your money to keep it together. Same is true for paper clips. If your favorite bracelet broke and you're looking for a way to hold it on, a paper clip might help. Just hook one through each end of the bracelet, twist it tightly, and your bracelet is good to go. The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls, the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet, is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. 
There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. The Zemchug Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th, and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity using something called a Saffir-Simpson scale. There are five different categories from 1 to 5, with 1 being the weakest and 5 being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. You'd need a drop of liquid, a state-of-the-art laser 3D printer, and a couple of hours of work to make the tiniest fidget spinner ever. Its width will be smaller than that of your hair strand. At least researchers at Oak Ridge National Laboratory managed to do just that. A double-stuffed Oreo cookie aren't double-stuffed, in fact. A math teacher weighed 10 regular Oreos, 10 double-stuffed Oreos, 10 mega stuffed Oreos. Turns out, double stuffed Oreos are only 1.86 stuffed Oreos. Chipotle peppers aren't some special type of pepper. 
They're good old jalapenos. Dried and smoked jalapeno is Chipotle. In its gaseous form, oxygen is colorless and doesn't have any odor. But when it's liquid or solid, this substance looks pale blue. After being caught by a black hole, a star gets ripped apart by its enormous gravitational forces. Some parts of the star's remains hurtle into the black hole. The rest, in the form of a huge jet of plasma, is ejected with such force that it travels hundreds of light years away. Not so long ago, scientists decided the Dino's family tree had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters like T. rex and bird-hipped vegetarians such as the Stegosaurus. A camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in a bit more than 10 minutes. This water is stored in the animal's bloodstream. As for its fatty hump, it provides the camel with nourishment when there's little food around. Some sea animals like salmon or turtles use our planet's magnetic field to find their way home. Your lungs not only help you breathe, but they also produce blood cells. These cells are responsible for the clotting which stops bleeding. The lungs make more than 10 million of these tiny cells per hour. Only two letters never appear on the periodic table. Those are J and Q. Spin a ball when you drop it and it'll fly through the air while falling. This phenomenon is known as the Magnus effect. You can see it at work in different sports, for example, tennis or baseball. Anatidaphobia is the fear that at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or a goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show you how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Your favorite fruit candies may be shining because they're covered with carnauba wax. Many fruits, especially apples, have a thin layer of this wax too. Not only can it make the candies and fruit appear glossy, but it also makes your car shine. Peaches and nectarines seem different, but in fact, they're pretty much the same fruit. If the fluffiness gene is dominant, we get peaches. If not, we get smooth nectarines. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have been found to remember people for a long time. This could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily, so it might be better to play it safe and just give them a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through the town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from their home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of a word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi, fettuccino instead of fettuccini, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Water can freeze and boil at the same time. This is called the triple point. That's when a substance can be solid, liquid, and gaseous at the same time. But there's only one pressure temperature that can make it possible. We're used to ranch dressing being white, but in reality, producers usually add titanium dioxide to make it as white as your sunscreen. Oh, sunscreen producers add some titanium dioxide to their products too. Same with Caesar and blue cheese dressings. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. 
It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. That's how an atmosphere was formed. Cold water heats up faster than hot. The speed of this process depends on the temperature difference between the liquid and its surroundings. That's why cold water needs less time to absorb heat, but it doesn't mean it'll boil faster than hot water. Zealandia is a drowned continent in the Pacific Ocean. It's often described as a continental fragment or a microcontinent. Its area is almost 2 million square miles, about half as big as the US. It went underwater about 23 million years ago. New Zealand is Zealandia's largest part that remains above sea level. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out, some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Stars look as if they're twinkling because of the turbulence in Earth's atmosphere. It makes the light from the stars move in a different direction before reaching our eyes, and this looks as if the light is shaking. It takes water 1,000 years to complete its continuous journey around the world. The whole process is known as the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt. Bismuth is a brittle, shiny white metal with a pink tinge. If you melt it and then let it cool really slowly, it'll form iridescent cubic crystals. Those Skittles and M&M candies are colored with beetles. Red food dye is made of carmine, which is made with cochineal beetles. Red lipsticks are made with these beetles too. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and things that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. How high up you are also has an effect, so if you're at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Don't look down! One scientist has a theory that a substance existed in ancient microbes before chlorophyll – that's the thing that makes plants green – evolved on Earth. This substance reflected sunlight as red and violet colors, which combined to make purple. If true, the young Earth may have been teeming with strange, purple-colored critters before all the green stuff appeared. Apples taste better when they're sliced because they're exposed to oxygen. It activates the enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, responsible for ripening and visible browning. The same thing happens when you hit an apple. The oxygen enters the apple through tiny cracks and it starts to ripen. Are you into white chocolate? Well, it's actually not even close to real chocolate. It's basically a mixture of sugar, milk, vanilla, and cocoa butter. Cocoa butter isn't enough for chocolate. It should contain chocolate liquor or powder. The only product that never expires even if you don't store it in the fridge is honey. It has a low pH and lots of sugar. That's why organisms that cause spoiling can't live in honey. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth because water and air keeps pieces apart. People are more honest when they're tired. That's why most confessions are made during late-night conversations. Firefighters usually extinguish flames with wet water. It's water mixed with special wetting agents. These are chemicals that help water soak into objects and spread everywhere more easily. The sun is an average-sized star, and still it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. People have been able to spell their emails in Morse code since 2004. That's when a new symbol, at, was added to the code for the first time. The character is actually called a comet and consists of the A and C signals with no break in between. Now, there are things about nature that you know for sure. Or don't you? Let's check how much you know about the incredible world we live in. How many of the 14 points will you guess? Let us know! The Great Pyramid of Giza was built when mammoths still roamed the Earth. Myth or fact? It's actually a fact. 
the most famous pyramid in the world had been constructed about 500 years before woolly mammoths went extinct, approximately 4,000 years ago. Their last known habitat was the cold and deserted Wrangell Island in the Arctic Sea, which might not have been as cold then as it is today. There are more trees on Earth than stars in the Milky Way. Is it myth or fact? It's a fact. Scientists used to believe there were about 4 billion trees on our planet. But more recent studies have shown that there are over 3 trillion of them, making it 420 trees per person. As for the stars in our galaxy, there are only about 100 billion, which is 30 times fewer than the trees on Earth alone. The trees you see are all individual ones, myth or fact. This is false. In fact, 90% of the trees on Earth are interconnected by mycelium filaments. They send warning signals when in danger and exchange nutrients through them. It's kind of like the underground internet. Also, there are organisms like Pando, for example, which is the largest single living being on the planet. It looks like a dense forest of quaking aspens. In fact, it's basically a single giant tree, with its roots being interconnected underground. We drink the same water dinosaurs used to drink hundreds of millions of years ago. Myth or fact? Actually, it is. Only a small portion of the water on our planet has evaporated for good. The rest of it is constantly renewed. So, mammoths, dinosaurs, and whatever came before them billions of years ago drank and swam in the same water we see today. Not to mention what else they did in the water. Unfortunately, the water doesn't keep information about those ancient creatures for us to find out more about them. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Are you willing to bet on that? Myth or fact? If you aren't, good for you. Lightning may strike the very same spot as many times as it wants. It might seem random, but the electrical discharge from the sky is pulled toward the tallest objects in the thunderstorm area. Also, the material this object is made of matters too. It's by no chance that lightning rods on buildings are mostly made of copper and aluminum alloys. These metals are some of the most conductive materials, so they pull lightning very efficiently. All deserts are hot. Now, this one's easy, right? Myth or fact? If you guessed it's a myth, then right you are. Deserts are qualified not for their temperature, but for the presence or absence of growth and life in them. The most well-known desert is the Sahara, of course, and it is indeed very hot. The actual largest desert in the world is Antarctica, which is almost twice the size of the Sahara Desert. And you wouldn't call it even lukewarm. It's a polar desert, and there are several others on our planet. For example, Greenland. There's enough gold underground to cover the entire planet in a thick layer. Would you believe that? Well, you should, because it's true. Since 1950, humanity has mined nearly 200,000 tons of gold. If we made a cube out of all this metal, it would be 70 feet high and wide. Recent data from scientists confirm that there are huge reserves of gold in the Earth's core. The metal is enough to cover the whole planet, and people might have gold up to their knees. The problem is, we just can't mine it from there. Hey, I don't mine if you don't. The Moon and Mars are better mapped than the Earth's oceans. Now, this can't be true, can it? Actually, it can. We have a detailed map of the Moon and Mars, although we're still discovering surprises on their surfaces granted. Still, over 80% of the Earth's oceans are unmapped and unexplored. We can't study the oceans properly because of pressure, cold, and lack of light underneath billions of tons of water. 
The lava is always red. What other color can it be, right? Myth or fact? Myth. Usually lava is really red or orange because it's basically molten rock from the deep bowels of our planet. But there's one volcano in Indonesia whose lava is blue and luminescent. Only at night, though. During the day, it looks normal. No mystery about it, just tons of sulfuric gas. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately. But you probably guessed you should never do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, the largest blue fire in the world, rising up to 16 feet high. Ever seen a gas stove burning? Here, the principle is basically the same. You can see a rainbow at night, too. Is it myth or a fact? It's true. And there's even a name for this phenomenon, a moonbow. Also called a lunar rainbow, this event occurs extremely rarely. It's similar to a regular rainbow, except when it appears on a clear moony night after a rain shower. There's a thing called a fire rainbow, myth or fact. You bet! It's a beautiful phenomenon when the clouds in the sky are painted all the colors of the rainbow, looking like a fiery, multicolored cascade. It only occurs when the conditions are right, and those are very specific. It's close to the equator, the weather is clear, there are feather-like clouds in the sky, the sun is higher than 58 degrees above the horizon. Such clouds are made of ice crystals. When the sun's rays hit them, the particles refract the light and create a rainbow. Wow! There are rainbow trees. Myth or fact? If I made you doubt this, I'm glad, because this one is not Photoshop. This is the rainbow eucalyptus, and their bark may literally have all the rainbow colors. These eucalyptuses shed their bark at different times each year. Every time the old section goes off, the tree first reveals bright green bark that was hiding underneath. And then it may turn any color. There's a whole set of hues. Orange, maroon, blue, even purple. Stones can move on their own. Myth or fact? Well, you'd be right to believe me. There's a desert plain in California where rocks move around of their own will. Once this plain used to be the bottom of a lake, but then it dried out and became an arid wasteland. Sometimes, rains fall here, flooding the entire valley. When night comes, the temperature drops and the water is covered with a thin layer of ice. When it gets warmer again, the ice breaks into segments and the wind pushes them around the place. Some of these ice shards take small rocks with them. When the ice melts for good and the water evaporates, the only thing that remains are trails left by the rocks, as if they'd moved on their own. Mud puddles can move around. Myth or fact? In fact, a single mud puddle in the world also travels as it wants, and nobody still knows why. It moves at a pace of about 20 feet per year, and it seems to have started its journey near the San Andreas Fault in California. People have tried to stop its march, but couldn't. So far, this creeping natural disaster isn't showing any signs of stopping on its own, either. So, there's your pesky, problematic puddle to ponder. There are things about your body you know for sure. Or don't you? Can you guess what exactly is a myth or fact? One point is for each correct answer. Let me know your score. Brown eggs are more nutritious than white eggs. Myth or fact? Myth. There is no study saying brown eggs are healthier than white eggs. The only difference is the color of the eggshell. The color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. That is related to the type of chicken. Chickens with white earlobes tend to have white eggs. Have you heard that a large amount of the dust in your home is actually decanted skin? 
Not cool, I know. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. You're not just mopping your skin flakes from the floor. Many other components make the house dust. Fibers, hair, building materials, mold, pollen, insect body parts, and ash are some of them, according to the study made in Canadian houses. This makes sense because a house nearby a busy highway or in a renovation area has more dust than a house in the middle of a forest. Skin is our largest organ. Is this a fact or myth? It's a fact. You might think for a second that the intestine can be quite large when you unfold it, but nope. Skin wins the contest. An adult carries around 8 pounds and 22 square feet of skin. Can't think of us without a skin. It's not just there to cover our bodies. It has an essential role in protecting us too. You can't breathe and swallow at the same time. Myth or fact? It's a fact. Maybe you already knew the correct answer, but you tried it anyway after reading this. So see it for yourself. So in your throat, there are two passageways important for your survival. I'm putting aside the fancy medical names and I'll refer to those two as airway and food pipe. They prevent breathing and swallowing simultaneously. Otherwise, food would enter the airway and cause severe complications. This doesn't always go as planned. That's why sometimes you end up coughing and preventing the piece of food from reaching the lungs. As well as having unique fingerprints, humans also have unique tongue prints. Is this a myth or fact? Fact! The human tongue is magnificent enough in its features that make us taste the food. It's also unique in its texture. People use biometric systems like fingerprints, voice scans, and iris scans for authentication. They are important to the identification and verification phases. Tongue print is unique, so it's very hard to copy it. It can be used as a biometric system tool too. What if people started using this system in their daily lives for safety reasons? Imagine locking a safe or your phone with a tongue print. An adult spends three hours in the bathroom every week. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? It's a fact. A poll by scientists reveals that an average adult spends three hours and nine minutes on the toilet every week. This is more than the time they spent exercising. Take your sweet time. No need to rush. You swallow eight spiders a year while sleeping. Myth or fact? Don't believe it. Lucky for us and for the spiders, of course, this is not true. Fear no more and have a good night's sleep. Most spiders don't deliberately come near humans. Plus, vibrations coming from a sleeping person might be uncanny for them. Or maybe the spider just lives in the habitat. It thinks that you are flatmates sharing a room. As long as there is actual evidence, I call this a myth. Your thigh bone can resist thousands of pounds of force. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? Yes, this is a fact. People generally refer to it as tight bone, but its actual name is femur bone. This bone is located on the upper part of your leg. Experts say that this bone is hard to break. It's one of the two strongest bones in our anatomy. The first one is the temporal bone of the skull. If you wondered about the first one. Anyway, a tight bone can support 30 times more of your body weight. Maybe it's because the femur bone is the longest and largest bone in the human body. Do you believe that shaving your hair makes it grow back thicker? Fact or myth? Watch how I debunk that myth. Experts say shaving doesn't affect the thickness of the hair. The hair's head didn't remove, so the root is still there. You only shave the upper part. After a shave, the hair grows bluntly because it's been cut. That's why you may feel it's getting thicker. It's safe to eat food that's been on the floor for 5 seconds or less. Is this a fact or a myth? Sorry for blocking the best way you justify eating something that fell on the floor. There's no such thing as the 5 second rule. Researchers found that a substantial amount of bacteria transferred to the food within 5 seconds. The moisture of the food directly affects contamination. Imagine you drop a slice of watermelon and chips on the floor. I don't know why you're eating both together or how you end up dropping them both. But let's continue with this example anyway. The watermelon will have more contamination than chips because watermelon has more moisture in it. The surface of the watermelon is more open to transferring bacteria. Blondes and redheads may soon disappear. Myth or fact? An easy one, right? This is a myth. Red or blonde colored hairs are connected to recessive genes. 
they can be carried from one generation to another without creating the hair color of the carrier. If both parents have the correct recessive genes, the chances are high that the next generation will have blonde or red hair. These genes are rare, but populations still have those genes carried out so they won't get lost forever. For that to happen, literally everyone on the planet who carries that gene must disappear. So, the chances are low. Drinking coffee dehydrates you. Is it a fact or myth? Myth! You can enjoy your morning coffee. Okay, you may visit the bathroom more frequently after drinking coffee, but it doesn't mean you're losing more water. There are numerous studies made about the effects of caffeine. Some of these studies reveal that drinking a reasonable amount of coffee a day doesn't increase the risk of dehydration. Eating yogurt helps your digestion. Do you think this is a fact or just another myth? A fact, but with the right choice of yogurt. Yogurt is food containing probiotics. They are the good bacteria that make everything flow smoothly in your gut. Eating yogurt alone may not be enough to have a healthy digestive system. It supports the digestive system positively. Keep in mind, though, not all yogurts are equal. Some of them have sugar in them, or they come with toppings like candy or cookies. Go for the classic ones. Your hair will grow faster if you have it cut more often. Fact or myth? We were always told not to cry too much over the hair we lost because it would grow back faster. Unfortunately, the hair growth rate doesn't depend on how often you get a haircut. The average hair growth rate is 0.01 inches per day. Plus, many factors affect it – age, hormones, and even the time of year. Knowing this new fact may make some people postpone their hairdresser appointments. You find yourself at a food fair in Iceland when you see it for the first time. Volcano bread! You eat a slice and oddly enough, it actually tastes good. Unsure of how this works, you check out mm -hmm. the baking process. Hmm. Is this kitchen really strange looking, or is it just me? The baking spot is in nature, specifically in a hot springs field. You better watch your steps so you don't get burned by the hot vapor jolting from the ground. Now, a local baker shares their traditional rye bread recipe with you. Rye flour, check. Yeast, check. You mix it all together and pour it into a metal pot. Next on the list is digging the hole where you'll place the pot to bake. You dig for about 16 inches until you can see the water bubbling from the ground. If you want to do it like a local, you'll use your finger to check the water temperature. Yikes! That's hot! Actually, the ground is heated by lava. Iceland is one of the most volcanic regions in the world with over 30 active volcanoes at any one time. After you bury the bread in volcanic soil, you leave it there and wait 24 hours until it's ready. The next day, the bread is fully baked and super tasty. Ah, and the best part is, you just participated in an ancient Icelandic tradition. People have been doing this since at least the 1800s. Imagine it's your first day of work in a museum, and your assigned task is to clean the mask of Tutankhamun. You grab your cleaning utensils and then, oh no, this can't be happening. You just broke Tutankhamun's beard. I never wish this to happen to anyone, but this is actually a true story. Back in 2014, an employee at the Egyptian museum knocked off the beard of Tutankhamun's mask and glued it back on, hoping no one would notice. This mask was discovered in 1922 and is considered one of the 10 symbols of our human civilization. Oh, and the best part of this story? It took historians until 2016 to discover the poor glue job. So, if you visited the museum between 2004 and 2016, maybe you saw the glued beard. If I say Sahara, what comes to mind? An infinite desert landscape, right? Well, according to scientists, the Sahara isn't always a desert. From time to time, it becomes green. But you probably won't be seeing this in your lifetime. Every 10,000 years, the Sahara lives through a humid period, where the sand gives way to lush green vegetation and sparkling lakes. This happens due to a tilt in the Earth's axis, which affects different weather patterns around the globe. Can you imagine the Sphinx surrounded by rainforest? It's mind-blowing! And speaking of the Sahara, 
Say you traveled back to 1800 BCE. If you timed it right, you might get to see the construction of the so-called Black Pyramid in the city of Dashur. These are not the famous Giza pyramids, but they serve the similar purpose of being a final resting place. In 1892, archaeologists excavating the area found an important part of the Black Pyramid that was lost for centuries. The Benben, also called a Pyramidian, was the tip of ancient Egyptian pyramids. A Benben consists of a solid block, usually made of limestone. Most of them were covered with gold and reflected the first rays of light from the sun every day. Hmm, can anyone get me a time machine, please? Remember when you ate something really spicy, your cheeks turned red? Apparently, that can happen to birds, too. For example, canaries can change colors after eating peppers. These birds have a special pigment that allows them to switch shades depending on their diet. So, if a yellow canary eats red peppers, it can turn orange or red. Can rocks move on the ground on their own? Well, you might be under that impression if you visit Racetrack Playa in California. The site is a dry lake bed and home to one of the world's strangest phenomena, the so-called sailing stones. Think 100-pound rocks moving around alone, leaving behind trails as long as 1,500 feet. They were discovered in the 1900s, and until recently, no one was lucky enough to be on the site while they were moving. It was only in 2014, after much observation and research, that scientists, that scientists solved this mystery. The sailing stones appeared because of the perfect balance between wind, ice, and water. When it rains, the water that falls on the ground freezes and forms a coat of ice above the ground. If it's windy, the rocks are easily pushed around, sailing along the lake bed. But hey, if you ever visit Racetrack Playa, don't disturb the rocks. On the western coast of France, you'll find the vacation hotspot known as the Island of Ray. It attracts tourists looking for scenic landscapes and beautiful beaches, but that's not all it's famous for. There, an extraordinary phenomenon occurs when two different wave patterns collide with each other, something called a cross sea. It's almost as if the sea were a checkerboard divided into hundreds of squares. And no, it's not an optical illusion. A cross sea only happens in places where different quality waters meet. For a tourist to see the cross sea in Ray, this probably means that there was a storm in a different sea nearby. This stormy water travels with the help of currents and meets the water of Ray, creating these oddly shaped riptides. Oh, and apart from this island and Israel, there's nowhere else in the world where you could see such a thing. The following site will either give you goosebumps or make you marvel at its weirdness. I'd say it depends on the time of day you visit. Next to the small town of Grifina in Poland, you'll find a very unusual site, a pine tree forest where each tree is bent at its base. If you visit during the daytime, I guess you'll be fascinated by these trees' sharp 90-degree curves. You can even use their trunks as a stool if you decide to have a picnic, for example. But visiting the site at night will most likely give you chills. A thin layer of fog hovers around, making the forest seem quite unwelcoming. Scientists still can't explain why the trees are the way they are. So, are you a daytime or nighttime visitor? You went for a hike and suddenly encountered a big cloud of fog. This may ruin your photo ops, but there's one thing you can hope for. Foggy days are the perfect conditions for a phenomenon called fog bow, otherwise known as a white rainbow. This happens because of numerous tiny water droplets that cause fog, smaller than 0.002 inches. So, instead of the multicolored bow, you get a transparent one with red outer edges and a bluish inner edge. Now, say you're roaming in a little town in Europe, appreciating the century-old buildings and good summer weather. You feel hungry and decide to type into your Google Maps the name of that restaurant your friend recommended. Ah, it's only 10 minutes away by foot. You follow the blue dot on your GPS and arrive at your destination, quick and easy. We all love this free piece of technology, don't we? But what if I told you that the U.S. spends over $2 million daily to maintain the satellites to make it work? Yep, that's the price. And to implement it, they spent over $12 billion U.S. dollars. 
Have you ever heard of something called a natural snowball? This could be proof that nature is really perfect. In 2016, the beaches of the Gulf of Ob in northwest Siberia were filled with rows of giant snowballs. Think balls measuring up to three feet across. This rare yet beautiful natural phenomenon happens when small pieces of ice are rolled by strong winds and water. The further they roll, the more ice they gather and the more that ice is polished. They end up as giant, perfectly shaped snowballs. They look pretty amazing on their own, but it's quite a sight when hundreds of them are together. How can spiders survive when they lose a leg? When they're in a dangerous situation and try to run away, they can lose legs and regrow them only a couple months later. They'll survive without any problem because most of the time, their legs come off at break points. Those are joints that contain muscles and constrict, which help spiders minimize blood loss. If they lose a leg at the part that comes before the break point, the spider still sheds it, but it will lose more blood. It will be harder for the animal to recover in this case. Speaking of spiders, have you noticed how they sometimes stay extremely still for a long time? They're motionless while waiting for potential prey to land in their web. When moving around, they waste energy and drive unnecessary attention to themselves. Either a hungry bird praying for a quick snack will see it, or a spider will remain hungry because flies will be less likely to come near their web. When spinning a web, they waste a lot of energy. Even after the web is finished, a spider may have to wait for days or weeks to catch something. So, it's important to save as much energy as possible. Hunting spiders are way more active, but the majority of them are nocturnal predators. They spend their days relaxing, tucked away under a rock or in a nest. Roast potatoes can stay hot for a really long time, and this mostly has to do with the fatty, starchy crust that's like some sort of an insulating layer. When you pre-boil a potato, this causes its starch granules to absorb water and swell until carb molecules seep out to produce this type of thick gel. Since potatoes are in the oven, high temperatures drive off moisture. This makes the gelatinized starch on the outside of the potato chunk and creates a crispy crust. This crust traps the heat inside. The fat from the baking tray collects in cracks too, and the heat-keeping structure stays strong. Birds don't get electrocuted while perching on power lines because it's not voltages that will harm them, but voltage differences. And electricity wouldn't flow without them. So, if you see a bird standing on a single power line at, for example, 35,000 volts, the lack of a voltage difference is something that keeps the animal safe. But if it accidentally extends its wings and touches another power line that's at a different voltage, it won't end well. That's the reason why electricity companies make sure there's plenty of space between the cables. Have you ever wondered why airplane pilots won't try to land on grass when the landing gear doesn't deploy? The grass may seem like a good solution at first because it's soft, true. But the surface will neither be smooth nor even. When pressure is high, landing on grass can lead to unpredictable movements and cause issues such as structure formation. That happens because of bouncing and unequal pressure. This can even result in fuel leakage and prevent the doors from opening. Bald heads tend to be shiny, even though the skin elsewhere on the human body isn't. Most of our skin is covered with tiny hairs that give it some sort of velvety peach fuzz look. With male pattern baldness, the hair follicles tend to shrink and turn into skin cells, which means there's no hair there at all. And the scalp is especially shiny due to the sebaceous glands. They produce and secrete some kind of oily matter that protects our skin. Sebaceous glands are located all across our skin, but the scalp has way more of them. So, this oil coats the skin, which is why it turns into a more reflective surface. House cats will rarely meow at one another, but they become chatty with humans, and this could be related to domestication. The process of taming cats and keeping them as pets started nearly 10,000 years ago. Before that, cats were pretty much loners. They rarely encountered other cats, so they didn't even have to use their voices to communicate with each other. Instead, they communicated through their sense of smell, which included things like rubbing against a certain object, for example, a tree. So they didn't even have to come face to face with other members of their species to send a message. And that's how they mostly communicate today as well. 
But humans don't have such a good sense of smell as cats, so these foxy creatures had to think of a way to send us a message and still get what they wanted from us, which turned out to be meowing. If you're planning a day trip to a desert, for example, the Sahara in North Africa, you're going to want to bring good sunscreen, and a lot of water, of course, but also a snug sleeping bag if you're planning to spend the night there too. Deserts really become cold during the night. In the Sahara, temperatures go from an average high of 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 25 degrees during the night. Such dramatic change happens because of two main factors, humidity and sand. Sand doesn't retain heat that well. When light and heat from the sun reach a desert, sand grains from the top layer absorb heat. But they release it back into the air relatively quickly. So during the day, the sand radiates the energy coming from the sun, which eventually heats the air and leads to extremely high temperatures. And during the night, the sand is quickly losing heat once again. But this time, there's no sunlight that would reheat the desert. That leaves the sand colder than before and leads to such low temperatures. In arid deserts such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the Sahara, the humidity is extremely low. That means the amount of water vapor in the air is almost zero. Unlike sand, water does well to store heat. Water vapor in the air traps heat close to the ground. It's like you cover the ground with a huge blanket. That way, you stop it from dissipating into the atmosphere. Also, when the air has a high level of humidity, it requires more energy to heat up. That means it takes more time for that same energy to disappear and for the surroundings to get colder. Since there's almost no humidity in deserts, such areas can both quickly heat up and cool down. If you microwave water for tea, it will taste worse than when it's made with a kettle. That's because the temperature of the liquid is the main factor for a good tea. Water should reach a rolling boil before you pour it over tea leaves, whether they're loose or bagged. It's an easy thing to do with tea kettles, both the electric and stovetop varieties. When the burner or the electric heating element is on, the water at the bottom of the vessel warms up. As it's getting hotter, water through the rest of the kettle comes to the boiling point. A microwave doesn't heat from the bottom up. It creates electromagnetic waves that randomly jump around the box. You probably notice when you try to reheat leftovers, they end up partially frozen in some spots and extremely hot in others. The same will happen with water because it's hard to control microwave energy. Overheated liquid won't be good for tea either. When water goes above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the boiling point for water, it can destroy the compounds that give a tea its specific flavor. Have you ever wondered why those electrical plugs most Americans use have holes in the prongs? The story dates back to the early 20th century when Harvey Hubble Jr. invented different types of electrical plugs. He started with the detachable electric plug, which was the first ever of that type. Some of his designs had prongs with indents, those aligned with tiny bumps inside the electrical sockets. Such an indent and bump system secured the prongs in place after people would insert a plug into a socket. At some point, these indents gave way to holes, which worked in the same way. But that's just part of the story. Most of the modern outlets don't even have bumps anymore. They keep plugs from falling out of the wall by using friction and pressure. Today, some manufacturers insert a rod through all the holes in a line of prongs. That's how they lock them in place while encasing them in plastic. Some also say the holes save metal, which cuts costs of manufacturing in the long term. Soda bottles are always filled in such a way that there's some space between the liquid level and the cap. That's because these drinks contain carbon dioxide. This gas can expand if the bottle gets heated. If there's no air gap in the bottle, it'll break because of the pressure building inside. Also, when you open your drink, the gases go out in the form of bubbles, and the drink is likely to overflow. The gap helps with this problem, too. Except if you shake it up first, then open it. Now, I've never done that. There are sounds most people can't stand, like the sound of a fingernail on a blackboard or someone scratching a window. Such noise irritates the amygdala. That's a small part of your brain controlling your emotions, including fear and survival instincts. Some cheeses have holes in them. 
They're called eyes. These eyes are made by bacteria used in the process of production. When cheese is almost ready, these bacteria release carbon dioxide. And this gas forms bubbles that later become the cheese's eyes. See? Cats knock different things over because of their hunting instincts. Your cat is simply checking whether the thing is alive or not. Or it might want your attention. Cats are smart and know that humans come very fast when something is broken. When the pizza dough is ready, it gets manually spun in the air. This process removes lumps and creates its circular shape. It's more convenient to bake a round pizza. This way, it gets heated evenly. Plus, it's easier to cut a round pizza into equal parts. There have been reports of raining frogs, fish, and other unusual stuff dating back to ancient civilizations. Strong winds, such as those in a tornado or hurricane, sometimes get so powerful that they can lift up a school of fish or frogs and rain them somewhere miles away. Lightning is never a triangle, straight line, or circle. It always has a zigzag shape. Lightning is an electric current, and it always takes the path of least resistance. Air is uneven and irregular, containing dust particles, gases, and other substances. So, lightning just seeks the best way through. Flowers have different colors because of the color pigments they contain. But there are other factors, for example, the amount of light they receive while growing, or the temperature of the environment around them. Even the pH level of the soil can have an impact on flowers' coloration. By tilting their head, dogs try to understand all you're saying correctly. It's the way to adjust their ears to the sounds they hear. It may also be the way to show their empathy to the owner. Or they got something stuck in there. Tickling is bound to cause a laughter reflex, but nothing will happen if you tickle yourself. That's because there will be no element of surprise. Your brain knows what you're going to do. Barcodes speed up the purchasing process. If a barcode consists of 12 digits, the one on the very left is a system identifier. For example, 2 means it's a randomly weighed item. 3 is used for products related to health. The next 5 digits identify the manufacturer. And the following 5 are the product's number. The last one is the check digit. Scanners need it to make sure they've read the code correctly. The song is bound to get stuck in your head if its music is simple, the text is repetitive and short, and the rhythm makes you move. Another reason you might have an earworm is that you hear some songs too often, and your brain can easily detect them. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as very pale and don't print them. With age, your hair loses its natural color. It happens because keratin receives less pigment. As people grow older, the pigment cells in their hair follicles gradually vanish, and hair becomes gray. Some time passes, and no pigment is produced at all. That's when hair turns white. Trees stop growing at a certain age. It might be because when a tree reaches a particular height, it gets difficult for it to pull water from the soil. Because after that, it needs to pump it all the way to the top, and that's when gravity comes into play. Some trees, like the baobab, start growing out instead of up once they reach their full height. Your own body makes mosquito bites swell and itch. A mosquito breaks your skin. Your immune system perceives the insect's saliva as a foreign substance. So it starts a special reaction to flush the intruder out of your body. A compound produced by the immune system, called histamine, makes the blood flow faster around the bitten area, and it causes the swelling. The histamine also sends a signal to the nearest nerves, which makes the bite itch. Geese usually fly in a V-shaped formation to conserve energy and make sure none of their team members get lost. You can't hum while holding your nose. Trust me. During humming, you exhale air, but when both your mouth and your nose are closed, the air can't escape. The longer you can hum like this is 2 seconds. Then you'll have to open your mouth and catch your breath. Road and construction workers are usually dressed in orange because the bright orange hue is visible even in bad weather. It's the most effective color to attract attention and alert people. No wonder lots of safety jackets and traffic cones are orange as well. Modern-day, perfectly round coins used to be shaped randomly or have no shape whatsoever in the past. 
But dishonest people stole valuable metals the coins were made of by chipping their corners off. Of course, it was illegal. To prevent this kind of fraud, they invented round coins. After that, it instantly became obvious when the coins had been fiddled with. Most ambulances have this word printed on the front of the vehicle, which is the word ambulance backward. It's written in reverse so that the driver in front of the ambulance can see the word properly in their rearview mirror. Then they can move out of the way and let the ambulance pass. White is the most popular color for painting aircraft. It reflects sunlight most effectively, which doesn't let the plane heat up too much. All kinds of cracks, dents, and other damage are much more visible on the white background. It means the fault can be spotted and repaired as fast as possible. And finally, it costs less to buy a white-colored airplane because it's the color they have at birth. Unlike what many people believe, adding salt to water won't make it boil faster. It's true that salt water gets hotter more quickly than the regular one, but its boiling point is also higher since salt adds some extra mass to the water, so it won't make things speed up. The first basketballs were brown because they were made of brownish leather. But such balls were difficult to see for both players and for fans. To make the basketball more visible, they decided to make it orange. Ooh, like the traffic cones. Flamingos are born gray, but they turn pink because of their diet. A lot of tiny shrimps and blue algae. Both of these products are packed with special pigments. When the flamingo's liver processes these pigments, special molecules travel to the bird's legs, bill, and feathers, painting them pink. Donuts are shaped like rings because, otherwise, they might get overdone at the edges but uncooked and gooey inside. With a hole in the center, both the outsides and the insides get ready at the same time. Bears don't sleep for months during hibernation. Instead, all the processes in their bodies slow down. They don't need to eat or drink, but they can still react to any unexpected things going on around them. You see the sun as yellow or orange because the atmosphere of our planet scatters such colors as blue, green, and violet. This is also why the sun looks warmer at sunrise and sunset. Emergency services use two colors of flashing lights, red and blue. The red one is associated with warning and danger. It's also one of the most noticeable colors. But this color can get lost in heavy traffic because most cars have red taillights. That's when blue flashing lights come in handy. Your tongue doesn't have separate bitter, sweet, sour, or salty sections for tasting. Each of the 8,000 taste buds you have on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, or even in the throat, yep, can detect all the tastes. Lots of private houses have triangular-shaped roofs because this allows rain, snow, and fallen leaves to slide off the slope. If all this stuff piled up on top of your house, one day your roof would collapse. Kangaroos have muscular legs, big feet, and tails that allow them to move forward really fast. But the animal can't go in the opposite direction. That's because of their body construction. (laughs) Leather often looks dull to the eye because it's covered with itsy-bitsy scratches and scrapes. They scatter the light that hits the material. When you coat your shoes in a layer of wax, you fill these tiny crevices. The surface becomes smoother, and the rays of light bounce off it more evenly. That's why the leather looks shiny. Bread tag colors indicate the day when the bread was baked. For Monday, they use the blue tag. Tuesday is green and Thursday is red. Bread bags have white tags on Friday, and on Saturday, they are yellow. This makes it easy for grocery store employees to remove stale bread from the shelves and replace it with freshly baked ones. Wimbledon tennis balls are always stored at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature can influence their bounciness. When the ball is warm, gas molecules inside it expand. This makes the ball bouncier. After the ball cools down, the molecules shrink. This decreases the bounciness. When a storm is coming, clouds seem to turn dark. But it's just an illusion. Thin clouds on a sunny day let the light through easily. They also scatter all the colors of the light spectrum. This makes us perceive the clouds as white. But the thicker the clouds are and the more water droplets they contain, the less light they let through and the darker they look. Modern light bulbs come in all shapes, styles, and sizes. But in the past, all light bulbs used to be spherical. This shape made the glass stronger and less prone to breaking. And the sphere worked best when it came to delivering light evenly. If your blender stops chopping food and just spins it around in circles, 
you've probably skipped the pulse button. Most modes make the ingredients move around in the same direction at the same speed. But the pulse function creates turbulence, and instead of rolling around, fruit pieces fall into the center and turn into a smoothie. I like smoothies. The markings on the bottom of a toothpaste tube are there for the factory robots. Colorful squares mark the line that helps the machines understand where to cut and fold the tube. Green and black tea come from the same bush. The leaves get their different tastes and looks after they get harvested. Green tea is withered and heated through steaming. And black tea is crushed or curled and then left to oxidize and darken. The stop sign has an eight-sided shape to help drivers recognize it easily, even if they see it from the back. And when the signs weren't reflective yet, the octagon shape prevented drivers from confusing the stop sign with any other at night. Water is great at cleaning stuff because it has triangular molecules. They're made of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. Um, H2O. Yep. Such molecules have slightly different charges on their opposite sides, pretty much like magnets. That's why water easily sticks to other molecules, including those that make up dirt. Glass breaks so easily because its atoms are arranged rather loosely and randomly. They can't rearrange themselves fast enough to maintain the glass's structure. As a result, glass doesn't bend. It shatters. Earth doesn't get closer to the sun in the summer. In reality, it's closest to it in January and farthest in July. It's warmer in the summer because Earth's axis is tilted. It lets the planet's northern part catch more sunlight for half of the year and the southern part for the other half. You can always squeeze in some dessert no matter how much salad, soup, or meat you've eaten before. Your body gets bored of savory tastes, but when you see and smell something sweet, like ice cream, cakes, or chocolate, your brain gets excited. It overrides all fullness signals for pleasure. Plus, your stomach is a flexible organ, and sugar helps it relax and physically make room for dessert. Hey, I can use that information! The first solar calculator hit the shelves in the late 1970s. That's when scientists began experimenting with relatively cheap solar cells. Calculators were among the first products that needed a little power to work. Later, this technology moved to larger stuff, such as lights and highway signs. Light isn't the fastest thing in the world. Of course, nothing can compare to its speed in a vacuum, but it slows down when going through water or glass. Oranges, the fruit, not the traffic cone, aren't always orange. The green skin variety is just as sweet and ripe. This unusual skin color protects oranges from the sun. It's also a sign there's plenty of chlorophyll in the fruit. That's why green oranges mostly grow in warmer climates. A shadow is cast when you have an object in the path of light. Light travels in a straight line, which is why you always get a shadow when something's in front of a light source. Birds and airplanes are no exception. They do cast shadows, but you can't see them. The closer the object is to a light source, the denser its shadow is. And if the object is too far away, its shadow disperses. Have a good look at the front of your sweatshirt. Okay, let's ignore the pizza stains for now. Ever notice that V shape right at the bottom of the collar? That small V patch isn't just a decoration. It serves more than one purpose. Made from a double layer of webbing material, just like waistbands and cuffs, these inserts allowed the wearer to put on the sweater without losing any shape over time. As the sweatshirt would be pulled down over the head, the V insert would stretch and flex to allow a lot of wiggle room. The other benefit the V pattern gives is to absorb all that sweat. The chest is a major area of perspiring. Just look at soaked shirts after doing something physical. Although, the V insert can only take so much. That extra pocket on the right side of a suit jacket is called the ticket pocket. They used to store coins for people on horseback to pay toll booths without opening their jackets. When train travel became more popular, they were perfect for tickets and passes. As for the left chest pocket, it's used to store handkerchiefs, keeping them away from the other cluttered and dirty pockets. Metallic zippers have a hidden lock built in. Next time you've put on a pair of pants, shorts, or skirt, never leave the zipper handle in an upward position. Push the little zipper tab downwards, and it'll automatically lock. To mute your annoying beeping microwave, look closely at the front panel for a sound button. It may have been there all along, just begging to be pressed. If there's no button, try pressing and holding 1, 0, stop, or cancel. 
will either result in turning off the beeping sounds or activating a lock feature. Of course, if your microwave doesn't have any mute function at all, you'll just have to keep running to stop the timer late at night. Nintendo Switch cartridges have a hidden safety function, and it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. Although non-toxic, denatonium benzoate coats the cartridge in a sour, peppery, and bitter substance to prevent kiddos from swallowing them. This chemical compound is one of the most bitter flavors known to humanity, commonly used to keep people from consuming things they're not meant to. There's not much privacy while using a public toilet, especially when the door doesn't reach the floor at all. But these gaps are there for emergency access, in case the person inside needs immediate help. The gap also works for ventilation, thank goodness, and to stop people from lingering around the toilet too long. Toothpicks have a built-in holder to prevent you from just leaving them on the table. Just break off the top, it's that simple. Place that on your table and your toothpick between the notches. Pointy end up, of course. Now, it won't touch the table and get all dirty. You can do the same with disposable chopsticks. Break off the top piece before you pull them apart. Those tiny dimples on golf balls actually give a greater lift to the ball and reduce air resistance, meaning the ball can go further with them. These dimples come in spherical and hexagonal shapes, with each slightest change affecting the ball's performance. So, choose them carefully. Plastic wrap boxes have hidden little holders that stop the roll from jumping out of the box. They're little cardboard tabs on the sides that lock into the tube inside while making it easy to glide the film out. Just push them in and never be frustrated again. Gosh, I wish that would work with other stuff. The seven spikes on top of the Statue of Liberty's crown don't represent the seven seas and the seven continents at all. They're representing the sun's rays, giving a halo to show that she is divine. In the United States, 12 different Federal Reserve banks print all the money. So if you want to know where your money comes from, just look for these small codes. A1 Boston, B2 New York, C3 Philadelphia, D4 Cleveland, E5 Richmond, F6 Atlanta, G7 Chicago, H8 St. Louis, I9 Minneapolis, J10 Kansas City, K11 Big D Little A Double L A S. It's a song. L12 San Francisco. Never call it Frisco. Meanwhile, the bristles on the side of every escalator are in place to encourage people to stay away from the edge, meaning they're less likely to face a mishap with a trapped bag or shoelace. Did you hear about the octopus caught on the escalator? It was a stretch. Old-fashioned pin cushions that are large tomato with a strawberry attached are more than a place for your needles. The strawberry contains an emery board. When you stick your pins and needles into the strawberry, the emery board keeps them rust-free and sharpens them as well. Some people still forget to engage the hose from their car after filling up with gas. Luckily, a lot of gas companies realize this, so if you happen to drive off with a hose still attached to your car, there's a magnetic connector that disengages when pulled. Those different colored bread tags use a color-coded system to show the day that they were baked. They are usually blue tags for Mondays, green tags for Tuesdays, red tags Thursdays, white tags Fridays, and yellow tags for Saturdays. On the back of most beauty products, you'll find a small symbol on the back that indicates how long it'll stay good for. For example, 2M means two months after opening. Some jackets have those extra flaps with a button on the shoulder, and they actually have a use. These are perfectly designed for holding your purse, backpack, or bag in place and secure. Pom-poms on the top of beanies were never just a fashion statement. They were for protection, placed on top of the headwear to protect sailors from accidentally hitting their heads while moving around on a ship. Pom-poms touch the roof, so don't go any higher. They don't appear on every type of measuring tape, but diamonds or black circles are there to help contractors measure the proper placement of studs in a wall. Those little holes on your baseball cap aren't some fashion trends that stuck around for years and have never been changed. These holes are actually called eyelets, and they're to keep your head well ventilated, not for appearance. If you have YKK printed on your zipper, they're not some secret code to be cracked. Those three letters appear on so many zippers globally because they're the symbol of the world's most universal zipper manufacturer, the YKK Group. Every can of soda comes with a tab for easy opening of the tasty beverage, and every single one of them has a relatively large hole in the top. While it can make it easier to get your finger under the tab to get your soda, its intended purpose is a straw holder. 
spin the tab over the opening and place your straw through it to secure it in. Disposable lids do a great job of keeping your drink inside the cup, but that's not its only purpose. When you're ready to sip on your drink, the lid has specially designed ridges to double it as a coaster and hold onto the bottom of your beverage tightly. The tiny black dot between the lens and the flash on the back of your iPhone is actually for a great purpose. It's the third microphone to provide superior sound quality by eliminating background noises and to pick up your voice much clearer in a crowded environment. Gas cans that have two holes with caps aren't there to fill different sized equipment. The second hole is meant to be uncapped before you pour your gas to prevent that glugging effect. By allowing more airflow through, the smoother the gas will pour out. That little arrow next to the gas symbol on your car's dashboard shows you which side your gas tank is on. It'll help you when you go fill up your gas tank, especially if you're borrowing a different car than your own. Look at a check and see MP near the signature line. That means the check printer used microprint as one of the check security features. The lines look like a regular line to the untrained eye, but their words, like the bank's name, authorized signature, United States government, or even original document. That little disk that's underneath bottles isn't just a leftover part of the production process. It creates an even tighter seal with the lid. So even if the bottle was turned upside down, the liquid doesn't leak out everywhere. The plastic disk keeps carbonated sodas carbonated for longer with this seal. The indent in the bottom of wine bottles is called a punt. But it's not just something to help you hold on to the bottle. The punt makes the wine bottle stronger, so if dropped, the cork won't fly across the room with all that pressure. So get this, an extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster as it gives an escape for the air helping the water flow down. Those two holes on the side of any Converse shoe are not there only to let the stinky air out. Sure, breathability is important for any athlete. But the second reason is that athletes lace through those holes to get a better grip. Donuts have a hole in the middle, and it doesn't stand for O and Donut. It's not designed for an easier grip either, although it can be quite convenient. It's actually made this way for mass baking, so that they cook all the way through evenly. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations such as an undone fly. Oh boy. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people wouldn't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also easier to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go bad. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with one of these bars. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for dishwashing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw and make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. That comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. 
Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, and some other copper alloys for a reason. They have an antibacterial effect, so they stop microbes from spreading. They get rid of a range of harmful germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in a cart next to potatoes and onions. Hang it on a loop. This little hook-like thing is here to help you better organize the space in your cart. The carts also have a super handy grid. Whenever the cart's full, you just need to lift the grid and attach the shopping basket for extra purchases, placing it in between the horizontal bar above the wheels and the hook the grid has. A point on an ointment cap is there for a reason, too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil, and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we could hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tried a Nintendo cartridge to taste, you'll confirm that they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors ever known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy, like bags, shoes, and many others. Don't throw it away. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a packet with silica gel. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean or polished. It's for our safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or bootcut jeans won't end up between the steps. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges into new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. Ever notice a tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock? Its hidden purpose is to drain water to help avoid corrosion. It's always the most convenient place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close easier. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle, if you want to enjoy a cold drink. Same goes for fancy glasses. Their stem saves any drink from overheating. So hold it right. Notebook margins are not some extra space for note-taking. In fact, people invented them to protect their notes. People used to co-live with rats, and these guys like gnawing on everything they see on their way, including paper. Still, rats weren't able to chew more than the space left on the margins. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield. And it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. It may also block phone signals. So if you're tired of numerous calls, just put the phone into a microwave. But don't turn it on. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or more candies fall into your mouth, that means you've been eating Tic Tac wrong all this time. Those little holes in the airplane windows are designed to control the cabin pressure. They also protect the windows from fogging up as the temperatures drop and rise. By the way, the airplane window is round for a reason. This way, pressure is evenly distributed, so it doesn't get deformed. Blue bristles on a toothbrush are actually an indicator that it's just about time to change the brush. As the bristles get in contact with water, the blue or whatever other pigment fades away. So the more you use it, the duller the color becomes. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. 
The tab on the rearview mirror does have a function. It holds your air freshener, a pair of foam dies, your graduation tassel, and some other useful stuff. But in fact, it works as a tumbler between day and night mode. It helps hold the glare from the car behind you. Those car lights can blind you. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just